Hey everyone, how's it going? What a beautiful morning to be out on a hike this morning. I'm out here today looking and listening, of course, for uh, signs of wild turkeys. Ooh. You hear those coyotes? See, just what an amazing day. Sorry, I'm very easily distracted by wildlife, if you haven't been able to tell. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's some coyotes over here. Anyways, uh, like I was saying, I'm out here today looking and listening for uh, signs of wild turkeys to photograph. It's a great time of year to get out to photograph these uniquely beautiful birds as the males are out strutting their stuff for the females. It's just a great time to get out to photograph them. That's not what this week's video is about though. Uh, if you're interested in seeing some stuff on wild turkeys, a video that I did, uh, I did one last year. I'll put a link to it in the description below. You can check that out if you're interested. This week's video is going to be about something else. Uh, in some of my previous videos, I've mentioned before that knowing animal behavior can give you an advantage as a wildlife photographer. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, ever since I was just a little, little kid, I've always been so fascinated in uh, different animals, their behavior. I've always wanted to know and learn about what they do and why during certain times of the year or certain times of the day. And uh, I feel like this has given me a decent advantage as a wildlife photographer. If I'm in a scenario and I see certain behavior, I can make a pretty educated guess on what that animal is about to do and I can set up to get a specific image that I might be looking for. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. I'll run through a few uh, pretty simple examples of animal behavior that you can learn as a wildlife photographer. And then I'll run through some examples of how uh, knowing about that behavior can set you up for success when you're out there trying to get a very specific image of an animal. First off, let's run through a very simple example of what I mean by predictable animal behavior. So when certain species of ungulates or hooved mammals are ready to bed down, they'll generally scrape at the ground first and then they bed down in that spot. This is probably the most simple example of predictable animal behavior. So it's things like this that I'll be talking about in today's video. I'll run through again these examples of what the animal does, what it's probably going to do directly after and how you can set up to get a picture that way. If you've watched some of my recent videos, you may have noticed that I've been spending a lot of time photographing different species of ducks. It's a wonderful time of year to photograph these beautiful birds as they're migrating through various areas. And it's been so good for me to learn more uh, duck behavior, different cues that I can use. That rhymes. Anyways, um, different cues that I can then use to get the pictures that I'm after. And where I don't have a huge background uh, with knowing bird behavior, different things like that, it's just been a great opportunity for me to learn these different behaviors. I've been spending a lot of time with different species of diving ducks. Uh, these ducks, as the title implies, they'll dive into the water and uh, get their food that way. But most of these species have something in common. Uh, when they're about to dive, they slick back or compress their head feathers just ever so slightly and then they dive into the water to find food to eat. So one thing that I'll do when I'm out with these ducks is I'll watch for the individual and it's just this very slight cue that you can look for. They'll, they'll compress those feathers down and then I'll get my camera on them in hopes to get a mid-dive image. I think it's really cool if you can capture you know, those ducks just mid-dive as they're heading into the water. And so that's something very basic that you can watch for with ducks. Uh, as they compress those head feathers, you know that most likely it's about to dive, so get ready to get that picture. Another wonderful cue to watch for if you're out to photograph ducks is to look for the individual that's doing a lot of preening, that's splashing water up over its back and shaking it off. That's a wonderful cue to watch for because what that generally means is that it's about to flap its wings. Uh, this is behavior that ducks do when they're cleaning themselves off and then they'll fluff up their feathers, flap their wings to get rid of any debris that might be in those feathers. And so that's a cue that I watch for anytime I'm out with ducks because what an amazing 
picture opportunity if you can get a duck flapping its wings, you know, mid-flap. What an amazing opportunity. I was recently out photographing some American widgeons, just beautiful, beautiful birds. And I had a group of about six or seven out there. And I was just watching each individual. They were all kind of spread out, so I couldn't focus on all of them at once. And I was just watching each individual until finally I saw one of them start to preen a little bit more than the others, start to splash water over his back. So I took my focus off of this larger group that I had been watching, shifted to the one, and sure enough, within just a few seconds, he got up, flapped his wings, and just made for an awesome, beautiful scene. So that's another cue, very, very useful cue that you can use in order to get a uh, picture of a duck flapping its wings. Knowing about different species and how their behavior changes during certain times of the year is extremely helpful as a wildlife photographer. For example, I'm out here today again looking for wild turkeys to photograph. This is a wonderful time of year to photograph them because the males, as I alluded to earlier, are out doing these elaborate displays to try to impress the females to then mate with them. And so you can get some unique behavior during certain times of the year that you wouldn't be able to get during other times of the year. And there's so many species that do different displays during certain times of the year. So knowing about what times to find that behavior and then get out and photograph them can help immensely. Some animals as well can be a little bit more, a uh, little easier to approach during certain times of the year, which makes it easier to get pictures. That being said though, Please, please respect the animals. Give them their space, even if they do seem easier to approach. Give them their space, photograph them from a distance. Be as ethical as you possibly can in photographing them. They're out here to create and raise the next generation. We don't wanna get in the middle of that. We don't wanna disrupt any of these cycles. And so please just be respectful of them even if they seem easier to approach or that, you know, if they seemingly don't care that you're there, just be respectful, give them the space that they need. An example of how timing helped me get some uh, pictures of behavior that's only found during certain times of the year was with a pair of osprey that I photographed last year. It was a similar time of the year last year and uh, they were building their nest, getting ready to, to lay eggs and uh, raise the next generation. And I was watching this pair of ospreys. They flew around collecting nesting materials to build a nest with. And it gave me essentially limitless opportunities to photograph these birds and practice my uh, birds in flight photography. And it was cool because they were, cast, um, they were carrying all this nesting material as well, which made for some pretty unique photos and just a really cool opportunity. So again, knowing about that timing really helped me to capitalize on practicing bird and flight photography and get some unique images that way. For this next example, I'm gonna show you a series of pictures here, and I wanna see if you guys can guess what I'm about to talk about. So as you can see in this series of images that I've showed you, all of these different species are demonstrating a very similar behavior. What this is called is a flame and response. All of these species, plus many others, have what's called a Jacobson's organ in the roof of their mouth. And when this organ is exposed to various smells or pheromones, uh, this tells these animals many things. It can tell them which individuals have been in a certain area I can tell the males if a female is ready to mate, and it can even synchronize birthing times between females of a species in some scenarios. So there's a lot of information that can be learned by these animals uh, by using this response. I've heard it explained in a wonderful way before uh, that it's essentially smelling in high definition is how I heard it explained, and I think that's a great way to explain it. And so how you can use this as a photographer to get pictures is if I'm watching, say, a deer or a moose or bighorn sheep, something like that, and it's a certain time of year, females are ready to mate, and that uh, male then goes and smells at her urine. I know that sounds weird, um, but again, that's how they can tell if she's ready to mate. If I see that individual smell at urine, I know that they're most likely about 
to uh, do this flame in response. And it just adds a little bit more to a picture when you're taking it. It makes it a little bit more interesting picture to look at, in my opinion. And uh, a lot of people think that it's just ungulates, just these hooved mammals that do this response. But there are so many other species that do this as well. So it's something that I always look for when I'm watching various species. Uh, I just like to document these different species uh, as they go about doing this response. Just fascinating behavior. The whole idea behind this week's video is to uh, learn about different animal behavior and how you can use that knowledge as a wildlife photographer to make a more interesting or more engaging image to look at. But the most important thing to remember is to photograph every animal that you do as respectfully as possible. You know, there's so many different species out there and they each show signs of discomfort in a little bit different ways. Some general things that you can look for though are uh, our ears pinned back? Is that animal stomping? Is it yawning excessively? Are there sporadic changes in behavior or movement? These are all cues that you can look for in an animal to uh, see if it's uncomfortable or to see if it's nervous at all with you being there photographing it. And please, if you ever pick up on some of these cues, if you ever find an uncomfortable animal, please just carefully and calmly back out of that area and go find something else to photograph honestly. One of the most important tips that I can leave you guys uh, for wildlife photography and wildlife images is a comfortable animal is the best animal to photograph. If you're in a scenario and you're photographing an uncomfortable animal, there's very slight cues uh, that the trained eye can pick up on that will notice that that animal is uncomfortable and it's not it's not acting naturally. So the best animals to photograph to get the most natural looking images are comfortable animals. So please always, always photograph these animals as respectfully as possible. Make sure they're comfortable. I hope this week's video has been helpful for you guys. I hope a couple of these, these points have been helpful for you and that you can use them in your photography to make a more interesting image to look at. I would love to hear from you guys. What are some of the cues that you guys look for? Some of the behavior that you guys look for when you're out photographing different species? What are some of these things that you look for to making more interesting images? Please let me know down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. I love learning from you guys. So uh, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you liked this week's video, please give it a big thumbs up. Share it around. That helps me and the channel out so much. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, again, would love to hear from you guys. Guys, I'm hearing a lot of birds in the area, a lot of little songbirds. One of my goals this year is to uh, expand my bird portfolio even further by adding more songbirds into it. So I'm going to go out, continue my search for the wild turkeys, and hopefully get some pictures of these little songbirds along the way. Thank you so much for following along this week, you guys. Again, I hope you've enjoyed. Be safe out there. Go adventure. Find something fun to photograph and uh, be safe while you do it. Have fun and we'll see you next time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on.